Hey y'all, welcome to Shades of Brown, the podcast that discusses the ever-evolving and sometimes contradicting thoughts of a Black millennial. I'm your host, Allie B, and thank you for being here to listen to another episode. If you are new to Shades of Brown, hey, how you doing? Today, we have an incredible guest. Um, it is Women's Heritage Month. Is it Women's History Month? I think it's Women's Heritage Month. <laughs> It, we celebrate women this month, okay? <laughs> and I have a guest with me um, to talk about all things wellness. Her name is Martine Lewis, and she is a wellness RN, wellness registered nurse. Welcome to Chase Brown, Martine. How you doing? Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm doing pretty good today. How are you? Doing good. Thank you for asking me. I believe this is going to be a really, really good conversation because I think you have some experience on both ends in regards to your corporate career, as well as your entrepreneurship journey in the medical lane is also on the holistic lane. So like, I think this is going to be wonderful. So let's get into it. Let's unpack it. I know this is a loaded, this should be a loaded conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You call yourself a wellness RN or a wellness advocate. What is a wellness RN? When you think of wellness, you think of taking care of yourself, being well. And to me, I think that nurses keep people well. We try to anyway. We try to educate on how to stay well. When I think of myself, I think of I'm a lover of everything healthy and beauty and I'm an RN. So I just put the two together. Wonderful. I love that. I love that. And how long have you been an RN? 13 years. Wow. Thank you mm -hmm. for your service, especially lately. Like, oh my goodness. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. With being in our end in the past, in the past couple of years, how has it taken a toll on your, on your wellness? Oh, let me see. I, it was draining. I, I was exhausted. I, um, to give you a back, a little background on my nursing career. It started out overwhelming. Of course, I worked in a hospital. Mm -hmm. I was a cardiac nurse who later transferred into um, CCU, coronary care unit, which is cardiac care. Mm -hmm. And I worked in there for four and a half years and I got into dialysis. Well, in nursing school, I like cardiac and nephrology. So I just want to experience in both. I became a dialysis nurse and loved it, fell in love with it. I've been doing dialysis nursing for the last 10 years this past November. I later became a travel dialysis RN and it was very much I felt like I was being paid my worth as a travel nurse so on that journey I just kept taking assignments local assignments and within two hours or so but I knew I wanted to become an entrepreneur while I was on that journey I just didn't know what kind I didn't know what I wanted to do but I felt like I needed more freedom you know I was not wanting to work 12 months request off PTO time and someone tell me that I had to work every other weekend and ho rotate holidays. I had done that long enough. So that's how I got into traveling plus the pay. And then when traveling became so much more demanding, I was just like, okay, well, it pays well. So I just kept going with the flow. Well, mm -hmm. fast forward to that, the pandemic hit. So then we went from, you know, making our schedule to, you know, being dialysis. Dialysis starts early in the morning. So I was, a, I was used to waking up, but I wasn't used to working 4 a.m. to 11 p.m. or 5 a.m. to 10 p.m., five, six, seven days a row, you know, Ooh. because the, um, the virus was putting people in renal failure. So we had to dialyze them. Mm. I was exhausted. I couldn't keep doing it. I try not to quit, but that, that took a toll on me. So that's how I got into developing the business. But that's a little bit about my how my nursing career started and how I opened the business. I don't think I answered your question because I think I got a little bit personal. I kind of got no, you did. You did. And um, well, so that's how that started. What was your question again? Sorry, no, I, no, no. You answered my question. My question was, you know, about how the pandemic has affected your own wellness, and I'm like, oh, yes. yo, that's so, that's wild. You, I'm like, I'm doing the math. I'm like, wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. That's oh what? yeah, we worked a lot of hours. Yeah, and, but it affected me, my health in a good and bad way because. Mm -hmm. A lot of people didn't know that I was more tuned into the wellness side because there were times I didn't even eat at work because I was afraid to become unsuited, eat, and then expose myself to the mm -hmm. virus. It was, yeah, it was, it was a lot. I affected, uh, it affected me. I had poor, I had a poor diet. So when I ate, I was just eating whatever at the mm -hmm. time. And then the stress on top of not having a good, healthy diet, 
a lot of people didn't know I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, that is triggered from stress and a poor diet. So I was like, Jesus. at the time, like, you know, I was eating bad. It was terrible. So in order to avoid them taking my thyroid out or avoid putting me on and avoid putting me on medication, I chose to lose 40 pounds and I started eating better. And that's how I got more involved in herbs and herbal teas and better nutritional habits. So that's how I wanted to answer your question, but I got yeah. sidetracked to tell you a little bit about my history. So um, that's fine. That's it. That's how I got into the wellness side of it for myself. Oh, oh my gosh. I uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for your service. Like talk yeah. about frontline work. That is all yes. those hours every day, suited and booted, afraid to even eat because of the virus. That is, oh my goodness. Yeah. That is crazy. I, I, I can't imagine it. Wow. It's interesting though, because I was just talking to someone about uh, turning your pain into power, turning your pain into purpose and turning your pain into paper. And it sounds like this is what that was, you know, you going from a place of high stress, but turning it into something that is extremely powerful and beneficial to not only you, but others around you. So with you saying turning my pain, it was very painful to sit there in that ICU and dialyze those patients and then come home to my family and go straight to my room because, you know, they would bring me food because I didn't want to be exposed to the family. And I didn't know what I was bringing home. So that was very painful. But you just put that together to, for me to say, I saved my money to build this business. So it that pain was turned into paper, <laughs> for yeah. real, literally. <laughs> and it helped me build this business because I wanted to create an environment or an atmosphere where people could be re- come away from stress and come into my business and have peace yeah. and comfort and be relaxed. Mm. I love that because when you think about the people who are most successful are people who solve problems, right? And you saying, okay, people are stressed. Let me, let me help these people. Let me, you know, provide a solution for that. I think that is so incredible. And though I'm not one of those people who believe that God ordained this pandemic and that God sent coronavirus, I do not believe that. I do believe that he uses all things and works all things together for our good. So you taking this, you know, and that fueling you to create your wellness spa. It's just like, wow, thank you, Lord. This was painful. This has been stressful. This has been X, Y, Z, but I get this from it. And I think that's just so dope. So, so I was going to ask you what led to you establishing your, you know, wellness spa, but I believe you've answered that, but I do want and add to it, but you know, that was it. Yeah. But you can ask your question. I'll answer it. I'll just keep it short. No, go ahead. Go ahead. You tell us a little bit about, you know, why you established your wellness spa, but was that it? Cause you did say, you know, even in nursing school, you wanted to be an entrepreneur. So mm-hmm. was it beyond, you know, the, the stress of, of the pandemic? I think the pandemic forced me to step out on faith because I had been patient long enough, you know, I felt like, um, cause the pandemic has been what, two years. So I've been a nurse, so it had been 10, 11 years there that I had already been waiting and trying to see which way to channel entrepreneurship. Yeah. Um, I went after working a long day, I went and had a massage scheduled the next day and I felt so relaxed. I fell asleep there on the table when I woke up, she's like, okay, we're done. Martin, with your, we're done with your massage. And I was like, already. And it was like, I was in my mind. I thought back to reality because I had to go back to work the next day. And I left there and I said, well, let me get a nap because I always ask for my massage with essential oil. So my email, it dinged an alert and I woke up and I checked it and people think this is so ironic. Well, the email was like nurse entrepreneurs, nurses are stressed in healthcare. More nurses are making, starting their own business. It was something like that. That was wow. it. And I clicked on it and I was like, oh, I need to, wow. you know, read more into this. And I was like, I need to get up. It was just like, that moment so I clicked on it and it gave like information on you know different things and I you know one of them was health and wellness and I clicked Mm -hmm. on that it was a lot of things that fell under it and that was it I felt it was like a light bulb clicked on and I was like Lord this is my time Mm -hmm. I need to create a serene atmosphere for others during this pandemic to heal from traumas and stress Mm -hmm. in the workplace or just at home, you know, because, you know, a lot of people lost relationships. I was one of those people who lost a relationship during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and they were just crumbling. It was crumbling households, you know, due yeah. to financial situations, um, stress from, you know, whatever reason it was, I wanted to create a calming environment somewhere. And that's how it started. Me getting that massage, wanting other people to feel as relaxed as I felt, coming mm-hmm. home to opening that email, and then the rest is history. Wow. Wow. That's incredible. It's a lot, though, because like you said, so many have lost so much, you know, whether that's loss of life, loss of jobs, loss of relationships. It's a lot. Life is life and on a whole other level right now. And it's a lot. With that, we say that, but I don't know that we always give ourselves permission to adjust because of that. You know, I think we, for the most part, a lot of us still expect ourselves to operate at the same level we were pre-pandemic. That we're supposed to be just as successful, just as productive, just as quote unquote on, but it's a whole entire pandemic going on. People are grieving or afraid. And, and granted, you know, we're, we're two years in and things, we live in Alabama, so <laughs> things are just wide open, you know? So though we're not, you know, Lockdown or in quarantine, we're still battling all the implications of this pandemic, all of the the consequences, still a lot of fear. Yet we're living as if nothing has changed, as if we're supposed to just be like at the same, living at the same pace. And I don't, I don't know that we're giving ourselves enough grace or enough care in regards to our wellness. Can you speak to that? Why do you believe we're like that? Like we have to operate at the same level of productivity, even in the midst of a global crisis? Well, do you mean as far as productivity, as far as, as, far as showing up for others as, or building um, like the increase along with the inflation of the cost of things or all of it, everything? Like, all of it. Um, yeah. I think in America, we have things a little easier compared to other countries. Things are, you know, they say, well, my mother say, you know, our children have like a microwave life. They want instant gratification and things Mm -hmm. like that. But I think the pandemic forced people to slow down and um, see, you know, some people benefited from it. Some people didn't. Um, A lot of people as myself, um, after I got to the point of accepting the fact that I had to slow down, as far as my health went. Mm -hmm. And once I was able to work more in the business and make more of my schedule, I slowed down. As far as increasing productivity for some people, they're just always on go. They have to show up and be available to other people. And it's not a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, some people have a choice. Some people don't. It all depends on what your situation is. Mm -hmm. Some people, if the pandemic did not affect them personally, they may not take it as serious as someone else who it would affect them personally. I was in the ICU one time and there was a family of five in there. The entire family caught COVID Ooh, and geez. every family family member was on the ventilator. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And believe it or not, all of them died except for one what? brother. Ooh. So I'm pretty sure that brother may not be as productive as he used to be because he may be going through a lot mentally. So I think it all depends Mm. on the person and what they're dealing with. Um, Me, myself, I never caught COVID. My son caught it at school and I still nursed him and took care of him at home. They didn't enforce masks, but the way he saw things, he saw things differently. And um, he didn't feel like he needed to be as productive every day as far as showing up and doing all the sports that he used to do and things like that. He was like, oh, I think we might need to slow down or, you know, so it depends on the person to answer your question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the people who were not affected directly, I think they're the ones that are still wide open. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I also think just in a, a cultural sense, we live in a capitalist society, right? Everything is yeah. about profit. And unfortunately, people are expected, like you said, some people don't have a choice. You know, they're expected yeah, to show well. up, you know, even with the CDC changing the guidelines, whereas it used to be you had to quarantine for 10 to 14 days if you were positive with COVID. But now it's like, oh, just quarantine for five days. And after that, just wear a mask, go back to work. Don't open that with me. We'll have an entire, com- another conversation <laughs> on that. You know, I, no. I, that baffles me 
but I'm not going to talk about the government on this call. We're going to talk about women balance and everything. And I mean, it's real though. It's real though, because when you dig into it, you realize, wait a minute, was this even a health decision? It's because it seems like it was an economic decision based on Delta's recommendation. Delta, the airline, <laughs> the airline put pressure on the CDC. Like, yes. hey, we're, we're, we're losing business. We need mm-hmm. our workers. Can you just tell these people? We did our own research, Delta. We did our own research. And we think that 10 days is too long. Can y'all do five days instead? We have a leadership, you know, whose best interest is not always the constituents. It's not always us. And that creates a culture where everything is about profit. Everything is about productivity. So we don't even have the space to care for ourselves properly or the space to slow down when we need to because folks got to go to work or they will lose their jobs. And it just sucks. It sucks so bad. It infuriates me. Yeah, they live in a place where we we have a leadership who say they care, who who make, you know, certain people believe they care. And it's like, y'all don't care about us. Y'all care about us as long. They don't want us to die. They, they don't, I don't think that they want us to die because that would mean, you know, that if you die, there's no health insurance pay for your, you know, medicine. There's no, you can't, you know, give to the economy. So they want us alive, but it's like just barely, right? It's like, just remain alive long enough for you to be sick and still needing medicine, long enough for you to still be, you know, paying into taxes and all these things. It's like, yo, this is terrible. This is, and I'm, and I, and I know capitalism has its pros and cons. You are an entrepreneur. We're both entrepreneurs. Capitalism absolutely benefits us in a lot of ways, but yo, like this is, when it comes to our wellness, this is ridiculous. And the pandemic has shown us on a whole other scale, just how much our leadership our nation don't really be rocking with us like that don't care about this they failed us tremendously when they didn't close the country down like china did but that's another thing i was going to say when i asked the question do you mean more like personal or inflation because Mm -hmm. they inflated a lot of things to keep the economy up and going even when they didn't close it so they still made money and the price gouging was outrageous as well Mm -hmm. so a lot of the wealthy didn't really care about productivity it was a middle class that was more over productive having to show up when Mm -hmm. they really should have been at home because Mm -hmm. they couldn't afford to do a lot of the things and yeah that's to me that's a different oh that's a different conversation to answer your question I feel like most people were forced to show up due to the inflation price gouging and the government failing us period yeah that goes into my next question about we're celebrating women talking about women specifically when it comes to women and specifically black women we have a hard time caring for ourselves or even seeing the need to care for ourselves we typically show up for everyone else our spouses our children our family members our community our friends our jobs we show up for everyone and give everyone our best our all but we don't always do the same for ourselves what is it that we don't always see the need to give ourselves self-care. So yeah, you know, we have our friends who will do, we'll do our spa days and stuff, but it's still not like a way of life, right? Where wellness and self-care is not necessarily a way of life. What is that about? Why can't we grasp that? We can care for everyone else except for ourselves. That can fall under one word and the umbrella can spread very big wide. And I think it falls under the word conditioned. We were conditioned to take care of others. Mm -hmm. It was almost like forced to learn the skill of being an empath with compassion. Mm -hmm. So you care so much about others. You put the husband, the children, the family before yourself. Mm -hmm. And our culture falls on prayer to get us through situations that could be avoided if we would put ourselves first. Because if you pour from a full glass instead of a half empty or half full glass, you can be a hundred times more productive and anything else that you need. It's a crazy mix. However, I was once her. Yeah. I was once her until I learned how to channel my feminine energy and say, hey, wait, you're tired. If you put you first and do this first, you can help others and you could you could show up better and be more productive. And you go through healing, self-care, increase self-worth. And then once you incorporate nutrition you have great health by gut health great gut health and everyone knows that great gut health equals great mental health everyone doesn't know that tell us more 
Well, it starts with the production of having a clean gut with clean eating and it produces more serotonin, Mm -hmm. which makes you happier. It increases the um, hormone of happiness Mm -hmm. to make you more alert, less mental fog, and you have a better mental clarity of a lot of things. Now, once you mix that in with knowing your worth and channeling feminine energy, you one bad lady. Hello. You're, You're at the top. So after healing and pouring that full glass, I think more, what's more important than that, when you're pouring from the glass, make sure you're pouring into what serves you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that way you can serve others better. So to answer you, I think we were conditioned to take care of people, husbands and family mm-hmm. first. And it has put it put us in a place for a long time. And I'm not saying that God himself isn't able. He He is able true love is still live and all of that stuff is all Mm -hmm. incorporated in that but I learned I needed to rest yes self-care days put me first that way I can teach self-care routines to other people as they come through so I think why I think I'm able to better educate on these things because I was once that lady I went through those things Mm -hmm. being a nurse and caring for others all the time Mm -hmm. I had to wake up yeah and what I love is is you are such a beautiful example of this and that. You are a nurse where you you it is your job, your vocation. You are a professional t- caretaker, you know. That's what you do, yet you still make time to care for yourself. There is space for this and that. Is it equal space? Maybe not. You know, is it balanced? Maybe not. However, comma like like she said, we cannot continue to pour from an empty cup. That only leads to resentment and bitterness and disappointment. You know, it's just not healthy. And all that stress, like like you have said, unfortunately, can lead to other illnesses within our bodies. And I do believe that a lot of Black women struggle within our health for these kinds of reasons, the overextending, the stress, the running off of fumes. I don't know that that is the life that God ordained for us. That's not the abundant life. And I do think that we should come into a place. And it's my prayer that we as Black women come to come into a space where we believe, where we know that we are valuable and are deserving of the very best. And that we can also give that to ourselves. We do not have to wait on our husbands to give our give us the very best. We don't have to wait on our jobs to give us the very best. We don't have to wait on our friends to give us the very best. We can give ourselves that. We don't have to wait on anything. We can go get the life that we want and so deserve. Because if they're doing it, we have that ability to give that to other people. Just turn it inward. Turn it inward. That leads me to say that, speaking of women, what I would like to see is more women networking together. Not just because there's enough money for all of us to make the money. That is out there. I want more women to come together to build a foundation and trailblaze for the ones who are behind us. Yes. I yeah. want them to see us working together and networking together so that the younger ones don't have to go through this and feel like they can't be supported because they're not in a certain clique or mm-hmm. they don't make a certain amount of money or their business don't have so many followers or mm-hmm. support. It needs to be outside of entrepreneurship and cliques. It mm-hmm. needs to be daily where somebody yes. wake up and say, how can I help the younger generation or the women who are with me in my generation? How can we come together to be a positive influence on the, yes. on the younger generation? I love that. And I do recognize and acknowledge and appreciate all that is changing within our community, because like you said, we were conditioned and a lot of folks get tired of talking about race. You know, why is everything about racism? Well, because it is, we live in America and everything's about racism, period. OK, the quicker you understand that, the more things will make sense to you. And black women were conditioned from the jump. We are here to serve and to be used from our bodies to our knowledge, to our care, all of it. Right. From the plantation to now, like it's the same thing. It just shows up differently. But what we're seeing now, we're seeing a bunch of women stand up and say, no, ah, ah, I'm done from, you know, platforms like the NAP ministry, which was created by a black woman showing us how rest is a lifestyle and how Sabbaths are required. We talk about the Sabbath as this, you know, just we said in passing when we discussed the creation story, right? God used six days to create, to create, and then the seventh day he rested. And we don't take that as a commandment when we talk about, you know, following Jesus and 
using him as a blueprint and, you know, making our life a living vessel. We leave out the part about Sabbath. We leave out the part about, you know, how Jesus would have to go away and rest, would have to leave and get away from people. He had boundaries in place to make sure that he was always replenished because he was a son of man coming, right, to perform miracles, to save us, to save the world. But even Jesus, the perfect one, the holy one, the prince of peace, even he needed rest and he did it often, right, to make sure he had what he needed, regardless of who needed him, because they was always pulling on him. It was all. It was always someone needing for an eye to be open, needing for the blood to be stopped, needing for their children to be like. It was always someone needing something from him. Yeah, he was. I, I got to go. I got to go be with my father. You know, and I love that now. Black women are standing up, saying, "Yeah, no, I'm choosing me today, regardless of who's upset about it." You know, um, there there's a new trend on TikTok. It's called Black Girl Bare Minimum. And it's a, a space, it's this trend where it's like, we're going to celebrate doing the very bare minimum. Is that's me walking around my house with a robe on and just chilling? That's going to be enough today. And I love it because it's like so many other groups of people, you know, have been celebrated for being mediocre. Um, yet we are over here busting our butts, right? And not celebrating the fact that we are doing above and beyond. So it's like, you know what? Let's take a step back. We're going to do bare minimum today. And that's just going to be enough. And sometimes that's, that's enough. Like it, it, it's enough. It's, it's cool. We're cool. So my, I just really hope and pray that we would continue on that and really pass that on to the next generation that who you are is enough. You just being is enough. Um, your, yes, your work is important. Yes, your, your productivity is important. Yes, how you care for your family is important. However, if you don't put you first, everything is going to fall out of whack. There is absolutely divine order. And sometimes sacrifice is important, right? We want to sacrifice sometimes, but we can't always be self-sacrificing. That is just not, that's not the abundant life. And I don't subscribe yeah. to it. I don't either. Um, I know I'll take it. We'll go back when you were talking about racism. I am not a fan of how people operate around racism. I, I think that humans or individuals should all come together. Like I want women to come together. No one was asked to be born into the race they were born, in, you know, born into. Um, I feel like I should not be mistreated because of the color of my skin. When I'm on this journey, I invite all. I did highlight on my Facebook about the last day of Black history. I put as Black history come to an end. I don't know if you saw it or not, how I um, was able to start a wellness center here in Dothan, Alabama, which I remember being a new nurse in Dothan and I was frowned upon. But I had women in that unit who didn't look like me and they saw the potential in me of being a good nurse and they didn't want me to be discouraged. So I want all women to thrive because I was once that black woman who was frowned upon and I wasn't good enough to take care of someone else's mother or father just because until I had to prove myself that I was a good nurse. And so I will not tolerate racism ever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then to move to the second part that you talked about, um, through God, um, I had to learn through prayer that I, I received his guidance. I was able to cl clearly hear him once I learned to put myself first and channel my feminine energy to know that. And I always knew I was important, but just the level of importance. When, yeah. I, was, when I woke up, <laughs> yeah, um, I received his word on guidance on how to make it through what I was going through and how to get through things. And I went from being a teen mom. A lot of people don't mm. know that I um, I got pregnant in high school. I was 18 and I had him, I turned 19 six days later. Wow. So I'm a woman who has, I could say, multifaceted experiences with yeah. life. Yeah. Um, and I will not tolerate racism. I will not tolerate anybody downplaying the potential of a woman. Yeah. Or the one, a woman of color at all. And I think that me planning everything and going back and establishing the fact that I do not and will not live in a stressful environment, mm -hmm. I will not do. So I get my rest now. I do plan everything. I am open to change and accommodating mm -hmm. others. And I still respect people's boundaries. When you said how he was, he was um, forced boundaries. I didn't always have boundaries. Mm -hmm. Allison, I, I didn't. I, I was showing up, being available, having quote unquote so-called friends who I thought were my friends and I was available to them and I learned the word no. You'll learn who your real friends are when you learn the word no. 
learning the word no I was cut off for oh crazy reasons um I remember being available to people at times when I had and they didn't and if I ever needed I was looking like oh why this you know such and such such as you know crazy stories I have so many stories to tell but anyway rest is a necessary act being at peace is necessary and knowing your word will get you where you need to be yeah. On all levels. How do you balance it all with you being in this space where now you get it, right? That you are just as important. You are valuable and that you need to pour into you. Yet you still have a family. You still have a career. And, you know, now you are both RN and uh, a wellness spa owner. So how do you balance it all? I plan, I pray, and I process. Mm, that's good. Plan, pray, process. Yes. That's powerful. I have my thoughts that come to me as I plan them. I pray for his guidance to lead yeah. me in the direction. And then I process the action plan. Um, I write things down. I don't quite, I don't, I have a calendar. I put a lot of things on my business calendar, but I still use pen and paper. I'm old. So <laughs> uh, I, I don't miss anything or if my phone died, whatever. But being in a stressful situation with a health issue, it forced me to slow down. It forced me to put me first. I, like I always say, I woke up and I had to learn to take care of myself instead of putting people before me. So funny, my children are just like me. Both of my children are very caring and open and mm -hmm. um, they, they share. Um, and so I have to coach them because I don't want them to go through the same things I went through. Yeah. But that's how I balance things. I take it, I, I love live that. up and I take it one, one day at a time. And we say that y'all, you know, take one at a time, but that's, that's real. That's what I do. And, I that, really and, and oftentimes, you know, if we, you know, take that literally one moment at a time is how we remain present and it will really help your anxiety a lot. You know, it's just staying in the moment and dealing with what's in front of you now. What can you control now? I think that's really, really powerful. Yeah, it is. I Plan, um, pray process. That's it. I have a friend of mine who, um, is very spontaneous. I can do some spontaneous things, but she gets so upset at me when I just like, oh, that's not on my schedule. Or I can't, I can't break my schedule and the things like that. Um, <laughs> I've always been like that, but I didn't always have the boundaries. What I would used to do back in the day is, is that I would do my stuff and add other people's stuff onto mm -hmm. it. And now I'm like, no, I can't do that. She's a mm -hmm. really good, she, she's always available. She has got me through some very hard times with a lot of things, with just balancing things because she has boundaries and that's, that makes her more spontaneous with the opposite because yeah. she is the one who puts herself first. She's like, okay, no, I'm not doing that. I'm doing this. So she can be more spontaneous than me. But anyway, that's how I do it. Yeah. And y'all ladies, you loving yourself takes nothing from your love for your, for your people, for your tribe, for your community. It takes nothing from them. It's this and that. We can have an abundance of self-love as well as an abundance of love for our community, for our jobs, for our people. Not like, well, let me take some of that from them and get it towards me. No, 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 no. Get that from within. Ask God to help you, one, to see yourself how he sees you, right? Someone worth dying for. And then two, ask him to show you how to properly take care of yourself so that you are living in and from a state of wellness. I think that's really, really powerful. Plan, pray, process. So let's talk about your wellness spot. Can you tell us the name of it and the services you offer, the benefits of it all? Tell us about it. Okay. Um, we'll first start with the name. It's Earthly Wellness Bar. Like I told you, I got into herb, the importance and the benefits of herbal teas and nutritional, the, the value from those and nutritional diets. Um, and wellness was, you know, being well. Wellness doesn't always mean I feel well. Um, it, it's I look well, I feel well, I think well. It's, you know, mm -hmm. positive thoughts. So earthly wellness from the earth. So the, that's where the name came from. And I, I put bar on it because I wanted to create like a la carte of creating bundles. If you want to come in and have, you know, whatever. If some I have a lot of clients who say, I like to do this, this and this. And I create a bundle for them. I can't mm -hmm. put all of that on the website, but whenever yeah. we talk about it, I tell them. So that's where the name came from instead of Earthly Wellness Spa. But I do still call it a spa. So that's where it came from. I love that. I love that. And you do like, like uh, massages and everything. Oh. The services. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about that. When I first started, I was actually 
dealing with the health issues. Let, let me backtrack. I had always, I was studying Dr. Sabi as I was doing my wellness information and um, education for myself. Well, I went to Honduras. Okay, so let me pause you for a second. And okay. for those who don't know who Dr. Sabi is, okay. um, he is a very well-known holistic health well, he was because he was, said he, yeah. he has since passed. He was a um, holistic um, wellness advocate. advocate. Yes. And he is most known for curing AIDS and HIV. And for many years, it was like a, um, it was just alleged. It was, you know, rumored that he was, you know, doing all this healing stuff, this natural healing, but people wasn't giving him, he was, that people weren't giving him his props, but exactly. he ended up going to court and it was settled in court. Um, he had real cases, you know, that were proven in court that he, through his process of healing, through his natural way of doing things, through Miley healing Earth. the body. Yeah. That he, you know, he reversed AIDS and HIV and along with a ton of other things. Um, so I just wanted to throw that in there in case though, in case people hadn't heard of Dr. Sebi, which I'm sure most of my listeners have, but just in case you haven't, um, that's who he is. You can look him up. Yes. Um, and I was intrigued by the alkaline diet. I don't necessarily follow an alkaline diet, but I do eat a lot of alkaline foods. I'm still converting over, but I followed Dr. Sebi. I was educated by him. I watched tons and tons and tons of his videos. And I was like, I want to go to Honduras, but I couldn't go. You know, he, he passed away in 2016. I, I knew about him back then, like before he passed away. And I just like, I want to go there. Well, I went in 19. Allison, it was an experience. So wow. I, I searched the food and the areas and, you know, different things over there. And we went to Belize as well. So I felt like I was at home. It was like mother nature. The food was so authentic. It would just go right through you. Like no preservatives. Of course, we all know that. But the one thing that I learned from Dr. Savi was gut health. Mm -hmm. And you, he is very, he was very big on detoxing the body and having alkaline blood and, you know, ridding mucus through detox and alkaline, you know, you cancer can't form or disease can form because no mucus forms on an alkaline diet so that's just a little bit we can have another discussion about that if you want to and mm -hmm. that's something else to add to the people who don't know about Dr. Savi but when I went over there I was um I stayed we went on we actually went on a cruise so what, when we planned our um excursions they were all intentional mm -hmm. go to different places so that's how I got more into the wellness on the nutrition side through him and at that time, before I went over there, I was to answer your question about the services. I started V steaming because I had um, fibroids and cysts because, like I told you, my diet before was terrible. I ate a lot of sugars, sweet tooth, drank <laughs> sodas, and things like that. And um, I did not when I started when my menstrual came on. I was just passing like heavy clots, and I was tired all the time. I became anemic, and I learned through him that it's related to your diet, high levels of stress, and things like that. So went over there came back I found a lady that did be seen and I was like okay I'm gonna try it mm -hmm. tried it and success that was one of the services that I started offering with, medit wow. with meditation aromatherapy and I became a certified aromatherapist because I'm mm -hmm. I love essential oils and so I offered those services first um, with herbal foot soaks and things like that and that created the serene environment for the calming and relaxation for women's health and that was that was my thing I was all for women's health but I found that a lot of people didn't believe in it and they're not consistent. And you have when you're dealing with natural remedies and herbs and things, you have to be consistent. You, it's mm -hmm. not like a quick fix. And so I later added on to those services by a friend of mine said, well, you know, you're a nurse. Post-op care is is big. And so my body is natural, but I'm against body shaming as well. Um, I used to be very skinny and I got picked on. And my nickname in middle school was string bean. <laughs> and um. <laughs> I'm so against body shaming. Well, fast forward, I had a lot of people reach out to me and they said, well, do you offer this service at your business? Do you offer this service at your business? And I was like, no, I don't. So I went to a class, a build your spa class in Atlanta, Georgia. And I paid a lot of money for that certification, but it has definitely paid its wow. due diligence for me. Yeah. And um, I wanted to service women. This all falls into women's health too, women and men. And I offer the lymphatic um, manual lymphatic drainage that the body needs after having surgery. So once you're cut on, the body releases toxins and mm -hmm. it's very painful. It can develop like seroma, which is a pocket of fluid that can become infected or develop fibrosis, which is scar tissue or hardened tissue mm -hmm. after 
procedure. So we do the, the manual lymphatic drainage because the lymphatic system is actually the biggest supporter of the immune system. Mm. So when it's um, activated and you can flush toxins, it keeps you healthy. It's just like you change your air filter, your AC unit or your oil filter in your car, but you can't take out your blood system. You know, that's your yeah. immunity system and things like yeah. that. So you drain, manually drain the toxins through the body. So I got yeah. certified in that. You don't have to necessarily use it postoperatively. You can get a manual lymphatic drainage treatment done for just regular therapeutic care. We have a lot of people who had um, been diagnosed with lymphedema who sees a lymphedema therapist. Mm-hmm. And um, it has like pretty much healed or whatever. So they'll just have regular maintenance for lymphatic drainage. So I have wow. a lot of that um that really taught me a lot about the health and the immunity and um not health I meant to say um the immunity system and self-care as far as how to naturally cleanse the body I learned a lot wow. about that. that's wonderful that is a really... lot of other things but those are my main things that yeah I, that I, uh, so when people have like BBLs and tummy tucks and they need those post-operative massages I offer those as well so those are the main two things that lymphatic massages are used for. Wow. That is really incredible. Well, thank you so much for, for sharing your journey, sharing how you ended up in this space, space of purpose, turning your pain into purpose and into and, paper, into paper <laughs> and, and helping us. Yes, this is, this is incredible. I, I really appreciate it. And, I, and I, I'm sure my listeners will. And I, I, I know that I have listeners, you know, all over. But if you are a listener in Dothan, in Alabama, or anywhere in the southeast region of Alabama within the 90 mile radius, I would encourage you to check out Earth Wellness Bar. Do you have online products, though, for anyone? So my services are aromatherapy detoxification and things different things fall under this mm-hmm. detoxification manual lymphatic drainage body contouring and those massages that I was telling you about and then so the bee steams and the ionic foot detoxes so my online store now only has the bee steam products which is natural mm-hmm. soaps natural bath bombs and um oils for the private pubic area yoni oil and um the soap. I think I said the soap. Mm-hmm. Bath bomb soap. Yeah. And so then I want to add aromatherapy, which I'll start selling the doTERRA line of essential oils and diffusers and mugs and different things. If you can sip your hot tea and I'll add herbal teas. All of that will be added by April. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, congratulations on this journey. Thank you. And all you're doing and all that your business will expand to. So happy for you. All right, y'all. Well, you guys can support her that way. Can you give us your website? Yes. Um, the business is Earthly Wellness Bar. It is located on 2558 Ross Park Circle, Suite 111 in Dalton, Alabama, 36301. The telephone number is 850-557-8530. And my um, website is earthlywellnessbar.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter and Facebook, they're all connected and every all the names are the same, Earthly Wellness Bar on everything. So I try to keep it easy for everyone. Yeah. We'll go follow right now. Everyone Please go follow. follow. <laughs> Anybody who can follow us and or whenever this airs that listen out and they can tell me that they can tell me which country I went to to learn about immunity and health and wellness, they'll receive 20% off of a service. Oh, that's wonderful. Well. All right, get to it, y'all. Go go get your go get your discount. <laughs> Thank you. Well, let's get into the next segment, brownie points. This segment is for us to take a moment just to celebrate a small win, a big win, any win. If you've had a win, and I know you have, if you've had a win recently, this is the time to celebrate yourself. Take a moment to just meditate, meditate, think about it, write it down, write a note, post about it, whatever. Just celebrate yourself. Yes. And I have another thing I'd like to add. We want to add, um, I want to add that we will start having girl talk. So oh, maybe good. I can get together and do something with that in the spa. And I would like to invite you over as well. Oh, and thank we want to have um, women win. That's what we'll say. Let's think about a women win Wednesday and we'll have a girl oh, talk. Oh, that would be wonderful. With aromatherapy. So we'll follow up with that. Thank yes. you for having me. And I wish you the best. And I'm ready to get my mug. I'll share with you when I get my mug as well that I ordered from you. 
Wonderful. Wonderful. So Martine, what are you giving yourself brownie points for this week? It can be something small, big. It doesn't even matter. I will say that I rested this weekend that will take me through the week of having a peaceful week. Um, I didn't sleep too well last night because I was preparing, well, thinking about this, but <laughs> like I told you, I prepared the morning of, but um, rest. I love that. Rest. I love that. That's a theme. The last person I interviewed, they said the same thing. Oh, I love that Black women resting. That gives my heart so much joy that we are celebrating rest. Yes. yes. I love that. Wonderful. Rest. To me, rest equals peace. Oh, yeah. That's how I think about it. I have yeah. to get my rest in order to have peace. Mm. That's it. And what about you? That. How are you celebrating yourself? I, I am giving myself brownie points for... Um, for having a really, really productive weekend. So I, for whatever reason this weekend, I jam packed it with three podcasts in one day. Yesterday I had like brunch with my friend, then a baby shower. Then I had to create content. Then I went and got um, my nieces and nephews to hang out with them and had them overnight. It was just a jam packed day. And I'm like, how the freak am I going to do all of this? Like this impossible. But I was able to do all of that and get eight plus hours of sleep. And I feel so rested. And I'm like, yo, I'm winning. <laughs> I mean, winning, that's it. All behind winning. me. Winning. <laughs> yes. I was able to do all of that. And I'm I'm just very, very, very proud. So thank you again so much, not only for coming on to Shades of Brown and sharing your journey, but offering a discount to people who can answer that question properly, okay? If you yes. missed it, go back. She said, if you can tell her um, the answer to uh, what country she visited, in regards to wellness and Dr. Sabi, um, you'll be able to get a discount for her yes. services. So follow, follow as well. Follow, yes. me, follow, follow one of my platforms and answer that question. You'll get 20% off any service that you choose. Oh, that's incredible. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And let me just leave y'all with this. I hope that you be well, love well, and be loved well. Yes. I you love it. deserve that. I love Until it. Until next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.